let's start. So, uh, alors, je le dis en français, hein, bonsoir à tout le monde, ceux qui sont connectés, ceux qui ne sont pas connectés, j'enverrai je, euh, à Alice par exemple et aux autres du groupe Musicothérapie euh, le, le recording le, de, de ce soir. Euh, donc, on a le plaisir d'accueillir euh, Peter Bloom. May I introduce you Peter Bloom? Uh, he's a hypnotherapist, he's a hypnotherapist, and at the same time, he made a, a great work about sound healing. And that's why we are very interested in that group of research about musicotherapy in order to, to express yourself and to let us know how you move in that field and um, what is your work and uh, how, how, you can, how you see the, the sound, your sound healing system. Mm. So it's up to you, Peter. Well, okay, thank you and greetings and uh... My French is not so good, so I will speak in English. I hope that that's okay. If someone does not understand, you can, you know, there's not so many, but you could ask uh, Bryce for stop, please uh, translate. Okay? Yeah. You, your English okay? Yes, well, me, I don't speak English very good, but I, I understand. understand it's okay for me, but uh, to speak it's difficult. <laughs> That's why we say music is a universal language. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> music is a universal language, and I, I always like to start by uh, thanking the people who are here for giving your time and attention. Um, that. Uh, I hope you get something useful from this. Um, and also to, um, I learned from the elders that I studied with that it's always a honorable thing to acknowledge one's teachers. So I, I'm also saying thank you. I would not be where I am if I did not have good teachers along the way. I've been very fortunate starting with my parents and my father was a, a singer, opera singer, and uh, was raised in a family in a house with a great love of music. Sound music was very important. It was not an esoteric subject. I'm pursuing it from a metaphysical connection, spiritual, but uh, at least the great love of an appreciation of music was something that I got from my father, who was an opera singer, operatic baritone. Mm -hmm. And then my own search led me through uh, finding teachers of sound uh, and music in different areas, uh, including um, the great um, composer and performer, a woman named Pauline Oliveros, who taught something called deep listening and a very profound practice. Um, uh, uh, my studies, I was mentioning before we started with uh, Ustad Jamaluddin Bhartia, a very great maestro of the North Indian, Hindustani, North Indian classical music tradition. And I studied raga systems and sitar with him from 1978 to 1981, was big influence on me. Um, uh, more recently, uh, I studied with a gentleman, some of you may know, he's a, uh, a French citizen named Fabien Maman. Are you familiar with his work? You know? I yeah. know about his work, yeah. Okay. So I met him, he was living in the, States and teaching uh, Tamado, the Academy of, of Sound, uh, Music and Movement, healing through combination of, of, of sound, rather sound light, sound color, and movement. So the integration, uh, listening to certain sounds with glasses on that filtered the light. So we see different colors of light in the different 
spectrum of light coming in at the same time as certain tones and notes, vibrations, and also combining that with movement, uh, doing uh, Qigong movements. Um, so I'm just trying to give some acknowledgement that what where, where, I, where I'm at, and at the same time also um, being introduced to the field of hypnosis in 1985, so long time ago, 37 years ago. Uh, uh, at the same time, in the mid to late 80s, I was learning hypnosis, and we were using uh, early version of um, sound and light machines, sometimes called uh, learning machines, greetings, and welcome. Bienvenue. Bienvenue. Merci. Uh, <laughs> my five words. And uh, we would have these headphones and goggles that the fellow who was teaching me hyp hypnosis would put on and it would feed pulsed light and sound in through closed eyes, LED lights and sound pulsed in different frequency pulsations of uh, uh, the corresponding to the different brainwave frequencies. It's all based on the principle, very important one that I go back to over and over again in my hypnosis work, also in the sound healing of entrainment. It's sometimes called the frequency following effect. So that in nature, it seems there is a general principle that objects that are vibrating or oscillating in close to the same frequency will match. They will tend to try to match up with each other. And it seems maybe to do with the conservation of energy, that it just makes more sense. Uh, I'm not sure why it happens, but it does happen. And I was aware of this, and I was uh, also at the same time working in a introduced to a men's shamanic journeying group. And there was a man named Michael Harner, Dr. Michael Harner, who wrote a, a book called The Way of the Shaman. And a friend of mine was studying with Dr. Harner in the Foundation for Shamanic Studies and learning how to be a facilitator. And we use, uh, and he invited me to join his group. We use a drum like this. It's a frame drum. I'm very proud of this one because I made it. <laughs> My first ever instrument that I made. So anyway, back then, we're learning this technique to go into what uh, Harner called ASC or SSC, shamanic state of consciousness. Or, <coughs> or general terms, ASC, altered state of consciousness. All right? This is what shamans and medicine people have been fascinated with and utilized for thousands of years. Long before the word hypnosis was around, they were using sound and light and dancing and maybe uh, certain entheogenic plant substances to help people enter into a different state. And we can say a different vibrational state, a different state of consciousness, one in which they were able to uh, heal themselves and get guidance. So Harner brought this practice back from studying as an anthropologist, studying with the native tribes in Mexico and Central America. And he brought it back to you know, the 20th century. <laughs> uh, and introduced it and was teaching people. So I would gather with these men and we would set our intention to go into this place uh, uh, of using the sound of the drum and played in a particular way, 
a very specific beat. It's a very regular beat. Now I had studied drumming and percussion when I was younger and I loved syncopated rhythms and African drumming. This was very different. This was, I demonstrate. for 12, 15, 20 minutes, very monotonous. And um, I thought, well, okay, it seems to work. <laughs> you know, we set our intention that we we're going to go and get some help from spirit realm. And uh, people did, they went and met their guides. I, I brought back, uh, you know, an acquaintance with, with this fellow here who has been in my corner ever since owl so anyway i was just curious because we're using these i'm i'm going into the hypnosis office and we're using this equipment very 20th century technological equipment and then i go and hang out with my friends and we tie a bandana over our, and we burn some sage and we drum and we go into the lower world or the upper world and talk to our ancestral spirits. And I thought, I'm curious, um, what rhythm are we playing? So I drum and I time it. I'm looking at the second hand on my watch and I'm drumming at a power up approximately the same rhythm. It turns out to be about 260, 280 beats per minute. So I divide that by 60 and I get four and a half, four, between four and five beats per second. Aha, it's right in the, uh, the, the low theta range. In terms of brainwave frequency, this is what I'm learning about with the equipment to induce a hypnotic state is that there are these four brainwaves. And I, I don't know if, if your study group already knows about this. Maybe I'm repeating things that people already know. Um, no. As I'm more involved in the hypnotic uh, field, uh, I know, but you can repeat it for the rest of the group. That's okay. interesting. All right. So, so this, they've identified since they began to be able to measure brainwave frequencies, I think five. And they don't usually talk so much about gamma or high gamma, but the four that are measured and, and utilized in, in neurofeedback and biofeedback and, and EEGs are beta, alpha, theta, and delta. Beta being fastest to 12 to 25 cycles per second, our quote, normal waking consciousness. Right now, speaking to you, if someone measured me, they'd probably be producing more beta. Then the next slowest, that's 12 to 25 cycles per second. The next slowest one, alpha, is a, a light trance early stages of meditation, daydreaming. Uh, we all go in and out of alpha many times a day. It's eight to 12 cycles per second. It's very good. We want to induce and introduce people if they are stressed out and tense. We want to teach them a little breathing exercise or meditation or calming the mind, mindfulness, which will bring them automatically into alpha. The really interesting one for my money, the one that I'm most interested in is theta. Theta is four to seven cycles per second. It is deeper hypnotic trance. When somebody is, uh, is measured a meditator, more experienced meditator will plateau at a alpha for a while and then drop into theta. And theta is called the hypnagogic state in between waking and sleeping. And in that state, which I've come to recognize as desirable in my work in hypnosis, <clears throat> I am 
a person, myself, you, my client, has greater access to the uh, the almost infinite wisdom and resources of the unconscious mind. So from what we understand from, from our, our in a hypnotic community, uh, the difference between hypnosis and hypnotherapy and other forms of therapy, talk therapy, psychoanalytic therapy, is we're less interested in the conscious mind, more interested in the other than conscious, unconscious, subconscious, goes by different names, right? Depends which crowd you're hanging out with. They like different words, but we're all talking about the same thing. That part of us that is the vast storage space for everything that we're not immediately conscious of at this moment. So when we get into a hypnagogic state, which we all go through every day, twice in between waking and sleeping, when you're falling, go to bed at night and just before you fall asleep, you're not quite asleep, you're not quite awake. Same thing waking up in the morning, between waking and sleeping. Often people will have, uh, uh, oh, I remembered something that I was trying to think of. I couldn't, or I suddenly figured out how to do something. So inspiration comes when we are very relaxed and we have good trust with the unconscious and communication with the other than conscious part of our mind. So how does one get into that state? There's a, a book um, you're probably familiar with, Bryce, uh, Beyond Biofeedback, very famous book by Elmer and Alice Green. Alice Green. Who were working, where was it? The, um, some famous clinic, uh, Men Menno, or I'm not, I don't remember, but they, at the back of it, they said, it seems that there's a state, this is the same state of consciousness that corresponds with healing and creativity. These were researchers, early researchers, very comprehensive in measuring brainwave activity. They brought yogis <laughs> into the biofeedback laboratory and measured what's going on with these people who have been practicing yoga and meditation for decades, very advanced practitioners. So anyway, that's an interesting thought because in our work as hypnotherapists, in our work as healers, uh, shamanic or allopathic, whatever field we're coming from, these are two areas that we really want to explore and enhance for ourselves and our clients, healing and creativity, right? If a person is stuck in their life, and that can come in many different flavors, <laughs> right? They can be stuck emotionally, physically, psychically, and mentally. If they are stuck, um, how, how can they get moving again? How can they uh, access creative solutions that will allow them to get unstuck? That's a good question to ask. And so I've found that sure, <coughs> I can talk to people in trance and that works very well. And I can also say to them, you know, I have this instrument here <laughs> and I just move this back a little bit so that you can see this. This is a tambura. Bryce, is this more hypnosis or sound healing, this group? Uh, it's more about sound healing. Okay. But anyway, we can make the bridge between the two okay. topics well, because in that case here, there's a link. So. This, this instrument, this is... It's truly a magical, extraordinary instrument. It's called tambura. And I haven't tuned, I should have tuned it before playing. It may need some tuning. I just took it out of the case, but. 
Ah, yeah. So we just adjust a little bit here. Yeah. Okay. So. Now I know that the sound interface on Zoom is not the best, the audio interface, but I hope you can hear the... <coughs> Very long resonance, right? Now, I can play this for someone for a few minutes and just ask them to focus on the sound and breathe and allow the sound to wash over and permeate their being. And the combination of the suggestion, right? The famous guy, Jonathan Goldman, a pioneer in the field of sound healing, many years ago said, frequency plus intention equals sound healing. And uh, another gentleman I study with a lot, John Beaulieu, who I get my tuning forks from, who knows a lot as well. He's a naturopathic doctor, craniosacral practitioner, polarity practitioner. He's always saying the intention is as important or maybe more important than the actual frequency. So I could tell you that in the Indian music scale, these strings are tuned to pa and sa. So it is opposed to, uh, I don't know if you, in French, how they say in English, we say, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. So in, in, in uh, raga scale, they go, Sa re ga ma pa da ni sa. So this is a fifth, which again is one of those core principles in as you learn about the healing power of sound. This is a fifth. Pa sa sa sa. It is the same interval as is used in the basic tuning forks here, the, the body tuners that I use with a lot of my clients that are a C and a G. And I usually strike them against my knees. And I don't know if people can hear that or not. It's to, But if I strike it against a harder surface, it's more of a clang. Now I can hear the higher sound. And I'll hold these up to someone's ears and they will get tuned. And in the back of John's book, Human Tuning, John Boyo's book, Human Tuning, you know this book? He said, there's a scientific study. We all like that, right? It, gives some validity to our weirdness that there's it's went into a laboratory and they had people listen to this interval of C and G with a control group and they showed that there was a spike in the production of nitric oxide in the body. Nit not dentist not nitrous oxide <laughs> which is laughing gas, but not nitric oxide, which I didn't know, but it is a, a regulatory, it helps down-regulate stress. It's something the body naturally produces to help cope with and de-stress. It's one, a law in that category of, of, of uh, the molecule of Candice Pert called the molecules of emotion the serotonin, dopamine, um, GABA, there's a few others. 
that we, the body naturally releases and we feel good. We feel better, right? When people exercise strenuously, their body releases these endorphins and encaphalins and we get a, a rush of good feeling. So isn't that amazing? Just from listening to this interval, that for some unknown reason causes a spike in the production of nitric oxide. Now, did these ancient sages and musicians in India know that? I don't know. But, they, but from experience, they must have figured out how things work. Same thing with the drummers. Did the ancient, uh, the old shamans in Siberia and in, 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 in Guatemala, wherever they were, did they know when I drum like this, it's going to induce theta brain waves? I don't think they had a clue what a theta brain wave was, but it didn't matter. They observe, they do, and they observe. So this is how we discover things. And now we're getting validity, verification from the scientific world. So, um, hmm. let's see, what else? Um, just one question, Peter. Um, as you said, um, we have the power of the sound, okay? Yes. And it's um, uh, scientifically proved that um, some vibration can activate some uh, physiological function of the body, okay? Yes. And that you can activate um, parasympathetic answer or autosympathetic answer, stress or relax, uh, relaxation. Um, but as you, as you're also a hypnotherapist, you make the link with the world of the trance, with the hypnotherapy trance, and uh, with the power of the suggestion. So my my question, and it's not really a question, it's just, um, I would say, um, a note about this, is that, do you, of course, you know that when you associate uh, vibration plus intention, or as you say, suggestion, you have a more powerful um, answer, in fact, for the subconscious, because subconscious is at the same time the mind and the body. So yes. the body understands things that the mind can't understand, and at the same time, you can mix together in order to have a, a better answer. Uh, same with the briefing uh, in deep trance or many things like this, In uh, sometimes in uh, operative um, hypnosis that I made for surgical procedures. We use the same thing about the sound, not the sound, but about breathing, because it activates natural functions. So my question is, do you think that the sound by itself, without intention or without suggestion, uh, according to uh, some frequencies or some specific vibration or specific instrument, can heal by itself, I don't know, cells or parts of the body? Wonderful question. It's a wonderful question, and uh, my belief is yes. My, that is my hope and my belief that if people say, I, 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 oh, let me just grab one, one more instrument to, to show something here. I thought I had everything I would need, but I, I realized I, I want to show this. We say maybe all the man-made sounds, all the sounds that we, we uh, produce with instruments, and with our voice are, are an attempt to replicate what uh, Mother Nature, what Creator has made the sound of, of the wind, the sound of birds singing, the sound of the ocean. Now, this is called <laughs> the ocean drum. drum. Ocean drum? Uh, see, si? no, ocean drum? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. 
is um, manipulated <laughs> that is, oh. right. This is instrument, um, me, um, music therapies with autistic, with children autistic, and this is instrument, it's very um, hypnotic for uh, <laughs> for these children, autistic children. Absolutely. Yeah. I also have, a, a, again, a rain stick. A rain stick. It's You play it and it sounds like rain trickling through the branches of a tree. These are the sounds that um, what are the earliest sounds that were imprinted with in the womb? We hear a, and I'm going to get a different drum for this <laughs> because that one is too high pitch. Infant in utero hears this sound. That is the sound of mother's heart. Beat. It hears the sound of the amniotic fluid slurping around it, right? Maybe this is why, or uh, scientists tell us the creation, you know, not the creationists, but scientists that we crawled out of the ocean. So maybe these sounds of the ocean, why they're so soothing. If I ask people to name some of the most soothing sounds, they would say we're laying by the beach, listening to the, the ocean surf or the, the wind in the trees, or, you know, these, these are, uh, wonderful natural sounds that are imprinted on our nervous system before we ever uh, have any conscious awareness. Um, I also, um, I use this uh, variations of ocarina. Uh, flute, early, early flutes were uh, either reeds that were cut or ceramic made this is a turtle you know it has uh, um, a very, I think it's a very mournful sound kind of doleful sad but not necessarily but maybe Mothers, there have been studies about the um, lullabies, the, the melodies that mothers all around, around the world in different cultures. You, you have some, you have your hand up, sir? Do you have yeah. something? Yeah. Yeah, I'm Pierrick uh, from Strasbourg. Um, I'm working in the field of pain and yes. how much the sound can uh, reduce pain and it's yeah. quite interesting because uh, what you what you showed to us the, this instrument uh, reproducing the sound of nature yes. it's quite interesting because we have some results showing in even in animals that these sounds are really very efficient for re to reduce pain uh, in children adults and animals even rodents and yeah. it's quite interesting that it could be preserved through evolution in a way so basically it reproduced the sound of nature and the, the, what could have been encoded in our memory, in conscious memory of what is surrounding us for years, environment and the sound of nature. And it's quite also interesting, it's also very interesting to note that in most uh, virtual reality application that are developed at the moment, they are reproducing these sounds to, to, to help the, the subject enter into a relaxation state. So 
So that's one comment I have because we are also using a lot of sound to, to you know in you know, our clinic and and there's the second aspect it's more a question and it's and I'm working very much in the touche massage what we call the the massage skin to skin interaction between the mother and the premature babies yes. that's yes. my main job at the moment yes. and how much it helps and it reminds me that basically the sounds it's a mechanical deform it's a mechanical stimulation as well. And it, it could be, do you think this um, improvement of the well-being could be uh, maybe mediated by something which is not linked to the auditory uh, processes, but more at the skin perception, maybe? Bien sûr. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> of course. That, of course. We, I have, along with these uh, tuning forks that I demonstrated and these tuning forks, which I didn't have a chance to show, but these are brain, brain tuners that mm -hmm. are for the different alpha theta frequencies. I also use weighted tuning forks that are struck and then placed on, um. on the body. And this, again, people say, oh, you know, are you putting it on a specific... Uh, yeah. acupuncture point or I'm not a trained in Chinese traditional medicine I don't mm -hmm. know where they are but if uh, they would I would say no but you know where, where does it hurt let's mm -hmm. see if we can soothe that area maybe the, the joint pain so I also sometimes have uh, I place a singing bowl on the body and so the, the vibration is going through uh, the skin and directly in. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, yeah. you know this, you, if you're involved in the medical field, the skin is our largest organ. And, and we are mostly working uh, how much it, it increased the attachment between the mother and, ch and the child, you know, and the child is exactly doing the very smooth and very low frequency. Uh, yes. Um, attached to the mother and it has to be at a very precise frequency to trigger some oxytocin release in the body to to have the attachment so it's really nice so mothers yeah. will rock their babies and we know that this movement is soothing it's rocking movement there's just it's a natural thing to hold the baby rock it stroke its face and head and generally Go, mm, mm, exactly. Yeah. We, 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 have a we have a study running at the moment with the mother voice. So when the mother is speaking to the children, it's a premature babies, and they are yes. premature newborns, very early premature. And yes. when they are talking to their children in a, in a neutral voice, like, tu vas bien mon bébé, tu vas bien mon bébé, il suffit de dormir, very neutral, it has absolutely no effect on the, on the, on the, on the pain expression. The, whereas when the mother is speaking to the to the baby like that, tu vas bien, mon bébé, ça va beaucoup mieux. With the voice modulation, like singing, it's exactly uh, working yeah. very well. Beautiful. And we have very strong increases in many uh, well-being hormones and neurotransmitters. So it's wonderful. The other thing that I wanted to mention has to do with cats. Hmm. Cats purr. You know. Cats, if they fall and break a bone, heal faster than most other animals. And there's research that shows that the vibration that is made in the body from the purring helps bones heal faster. So there's so, so much that we don't know and that we can learn about the power of sound to help heal. Now, if you tell a, a dog or a cat, I'm going to play this note for you and it will help you heal faster, it won't mean anything to them. So I think animals would be good subjects to answer your question, Bryce. People are very influenced by what they're told, which is a good thing, because then we have the placebo effect, right? And that they're showing it is very valuable and real. If I say, you know, uh, take this, uh, this, uh, drink this water. I have magnetized it. I have chanted into it. It will make your headache go away. And the person really believes that. 
there's a pretty good chance that their headache will go away, but not because I did anything to the water. It's because mm -hmm. I have activated their imagination and their internal healer has gone to work. You know, the famous hypnotherapist, the one whose name we all know, Mesmer, right? <laughs> He was, he was a very famous guy and he claimed that he could magnetize people and it was an invisible force coming out and he helped heal many people. And they said, they sent over a committee to investigate his claims that said, that's a lot of baloney. There's nothing going on, but he is getting results, but we think it's nothing more than the, the result of an active imagination or a heated imagination. Well, of course, and that's why combining the sound with the suggestion is even more powerful. Yes. Yes, I just have a question about singing, you know. Okay, because we have you're... about four minutes left, but yeah, go ahead. Okay. So, yeah. Singing um, is the best. Singing, yeah. everyone should sing. Uh, Everyone should sing. I knew do, that you've made some experiments about singing and harmonic in singing. Yes. And according to my knowledge about um, trance, hypnotic trance, which is my, my more my topic, um, I would say that um, scientific studies show that uh, harmonic or specific um, mudra, you know, with specific vibration, with yes. specific sound, can activate. Uh, hormonal uh, specific zone. Uh, yes. You have experiments about this. I know that you made some research about this. Um, oh, well, I do this practice myself, and I believe that it, the, the production, uh, learning to isolate the overtones which exist in the voice for everyone, and learning to accentuate them is a healing practice and it 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 i'm i i do not have the scientific research to back it up that doesn't mean it doesn't exist maybe people can go and look and find papers that have said this but if in case anyone does not know what uh, what we're speaking about I give a very brief demonstration here using another wonderful drone instrument. This is the Shruti box, which is from India that is uh, producing again the, the C and the G. It's a drone instrument. It's a bellows. It's just playing in the background. And if I sing with it, I do this as a practice for myself. Um, I used to use a lot of drugs and alcohol, and, and I don't for many years. But I still like to get high. <laughs> and, and nothing gets me more high than doing these practices. I can sit for, for a half an hour and do this, and I am, I am clear. I'm not falling over, but I am very different changed state of consciousness. So I do believe that it affects the brain wave activity. Um, and, and why is it called magical voice? You know, in, in the, the Mongolian shamans who do this and in Tuva, they develop this and, and they, they, they do this and it, it, I've done this for people and they say, I right away, when you started to do it, I went into a different state. So, you know, again, I like the, the Native Americans say great mystery. <laughs> That's the, the, they don't say God, they say great mystery. So there's some things that are still kind of mysterious. We slowly, slowly peeling away the layers with science to find out why these things work. 
I think the a, the a long long time ago these meditators and yogis and and shamans went into altered states and they visited other dimensions and they came back with these experiences that looked like uh I don't the woman has some mandala behind you you have some some circular shape behind you mine not right oh, now. I, yeah. yeah so yeah uh, say what can you say <laughs> It's my so uh, they, they came back from these experiences having seen things and heard things and then they make mandalas and they make instruments like the tambora or the rattles or or the didgeridoo to try to reproduce these sounds from another dimension another experience and they didn't have science the way we do but they had experience and they they knew if we could recreate this maybe they would help us to get back into that state of consciousness again so if anyone wants to reach out to me my website is soundsforhealing.com and you can go and you, there's an email info at and you can reach me that way um i I, I would say if you order something from my website, please add on a lot of extra postage because it costs a fortune to send to France. Anything else? Is good? Yeah. That, okay. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Peter. That was very okay. that was wonderful you. to discuss right. with you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Bye bye. I have to go do something important now. I have to go. Uh, play tennis. Oh, great! <laughs> very important part of my life. So I'm running off to do that now. Okay. Good night. Bye. 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 <laughs> et voilà. Et voilà. On a, on a est arrivé. Hein. <laughs> oui, on, on y est arrivé. Et puis ça me faisait plaisir de de vous présenter Peter parce que je trouve que moi euh, je suis musicien, mais après mon mon cœur de métier c'est l'hypnose. Et, et c'est vrai que je trouve que c'est intéressant de voir des personnes qui, qui font le pont vraiment entre leur pratique de, de la musicothérapie, toutes ces expériences de vie, du sound healing, du chamanisme, etc. Et qui a cette approche, et puis en même temps, il est hypno, donc il a cette approche de la trance. Et, et je trouve que c'est toujours, toujours très, très... Très, très ouvert de, 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 de pouvoir réaliser comme ça ces, 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 ces ponts entre ces différentes disciplines. Ça permet de mieux comprendre ce qu'on fait dans tous les domaines. Ce n'est pas, la... pas vous que j'ai vu euh, faire l'hypnose euh, un jour à Nice. Euh, vous n'êtes pas dentiste par hasard Ici, si, si, c'est moi qui ai fait une démonstration. Ah, oui, mais <rire> vous, je vous ai vu euh, à Nice. Ouais, 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 ouais. Ouais. Oui, oui, oui. Eh ben, je suis à Nice, hein, donc euh, s'il y a un truc sur l'hypnose en général, euh, on m'appelle euh, pour ouais. faire de la démo. Ouais. Ouais, ouais. Ouais, ouais. Voilà. Okay. Et donc, la, bon. la dent a été arrachée sans douleur ah, ben, Toujours. <rire> <rire> bon, ben, j'espère que ça vous a intéressé. Euh, ouais. Je vous passerai les coordonnées de Peter. C'est un gars adorable qui répond, qui est vraiment disponible, gentil, sympa. Il a écrit un très bon bouquin, alors je dois l'avoir dans ma bibliothèque, je ne sais plus où c'est, qui s'appelle Sound Healing, qui euh, retrace un peu toutes les expérimentations. C'est quelqu'un qui est dans le domaine euh, bah, qui, depuis les années 70, hein, dans ce domaine-là, donc il a vraiment une grande expérience. Et puis surtout, euh, c'est quelqu'un de très humain et euh, j'allais dire qui est, euh, qui est vraiment accessible et, et très sympa. Quoi. On peut passer mmh. des heures à discuter avec lui. Merci beaucoup. Oui, c'est passionnant. Être... Il a ouais. une sorte de clientèle, il a une sorte de clientèle sur, euh, il, il fait du sound healing pour des... Alors lui, si tu veux, à la base, il était journaliste, puis après, il est tombé dans l'hypnose dans les années euh, 60. Il est sur la côte ouest, et c'est vrai qu'il y avait une grosse communauté hypno euh, avec Ericsson, tout ça, toute l'école de la côte ouest, Palo Alto, etc. Et, euh, et puis après, il est tombé dans, entre guillemets, dans l'hypnose dans les années, début des années 80, mais avant, il avait déjà toute une culture musicale, c'était un musicien, quoi. Et, euh, et donc, il a fait le pont assez rapidement, en fait, les pratiques euh, de trans liées soit à la musique, soit après lié à des trans plus, on va dire, anthropologiques. Il a quand même euh, eu la chance d'étudier avec Michael Arner, qui a été le, le, le grand monsieur de la, on va dire, du, du revival de, de, 
de, du chamanisme euh, d'un point de vue anthropologique et, euh, et alors lui je sais que dans sa pratique en fait il, il, il mixe un peu tout ça en fait hein, voilà il fait quelque chose qui va utiliser de la trance la trance de toute façon que ce soit de la trance musicale de la trance hypnotique c'est le même processus hein, c'est un, un on va dire un décrochage au niveau du, cer du cerveau pour euh, décrocher le conscient et accéder au subconscient à l'inconscient comment comme, peu importe comment on l'appelle et puis, en fonction de ça, ben, ce qui est intéressant, c'est ce, ce qu'on en fait. C'est-à-dire, ça peut être, euh, comme le disait Pierrick, euh, la douleur, ça peut être, euh, ça peut être autre chose. Hein, ça peut être du comportemental, ça peut être de la phobie, ça peut être euh, de l'anesthésie, ça peut être euh, de la spiritualité aussi, dans les trans spirituels, etc. Enfin, il y a plein, plein d'utilisations de, 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 de la transe au-delà de l'aspect strictement médical. Mais ce qui est intéressant, je trouve, dans la, dans la démarche de Peter, c'est que tout se rejoint. C'est-à-dire aussi bien il y a une réflexion et une interrogation sur la spiritualité chamanique qui rejoint celle de la vibration, finalement, qu'est-ce que c'est que la vibration, euh, qui rejoint finalement cette notion en, en médecine et en hypnose de, du guérisseur intérieur, parce qu'on sait que quand on fait de l'hypnose, on n'est qu'un guide, en fait, mais ce n'est pas nous qui avons le pouvoir, c'est on redonne le pouvoir de la guérison au patient. Donc euh, voilà, c'est plein d'interrogations, plein, plein de ponts entre différentes disciplines et, et c'est très très intéressant, je trouve. Ouais. Ouais, c'est vraiment super. J'ai une question pour Pyrrhic. Ah. Euh, Est-ce que euh, vous utilisez avec les euh, prématurés aussi la musique ou le. Ou ah, le justement, euh, non, j'étais très. Euh, au service où je suis, euh, ils n'utilisent ils utilisent pas du tout la musique. Et je, je leur ai posé la question. En fait, ils, ils misent complètement sur les parents. Et donc, en fait, ils misent tout sur les parents et ils demandent aux parents de, de, de parler beaucoup à l'enfant et, et de préférence de choisir la voix chantée. Et, et, et les, les soignants, donc les puricultrices qui sont là, font, font la même chose. C'est-à-dire qu'ils ont vraiment mis en place une espèce d'unité de, de soins intensifs. On est en soins intensifs. Hein. On n'est pas encore en unité néonatale conventionnelle. On est, on est, en général, c'est les enfants qui naissent avant 32 semaines d'aménorés, donc c'est des, des grands prématurés, des très grands prématurés, et, et, et ils chantent aux enfants, en fait, ils leur parlent en chantant, c'est assez extraordinaire. Et, 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 après, euh, et ça demande énormément d'investissement des parents qui peut-être aussi travaillent. Moi, j'ai lu des recherches, des, des, des articles où on a mis en place dans les couveuses mmh. euh, musique. Euh, soit musique de Mozart très rythmique, très doux ou euh, euh, juste euh, euh, le son d'un cœur qui bat mm -hmm. parce que le silence est terrible pour l'enfant oui, oui. Mais... comme... il se sent mort ouais. euh, parce qu'il n'y a ah, pas de son autour de lui et cette lumière aussi, il y a énormément de lumière ah, bah justement ça, ça, ça fait partie des, de ce qu'on appelle les soins de développement j'essaie de me partager entre différents groupes vous ne me voyez, vous me voyez pas beaucoup mais j'ai fait un gros travail avec Stéphane Guettin, que vous connaissez probablement, mmh. et sur, euh, voilà, sur, sur la musique et la douleur. Mais euh, je suis plutôt dans un groupe de réflexion sur les soins de développement où on traite aussi de ces, ces aspects-là. Mais je pense que pour le groupe, ça, serait, ça vaudrait peut-être le coup d'inviter Manuela Filippa. C'est une Italienne qui a fait tout ce travail il y a une dizaine d'années sur euh, la musique pour les nouveau nés prématurés. Ça, ça avait été beaucoup photographié dans le National Geographic. Elle avait fait un, un, plein d'articles à ce moment-là. On voyait un petit bébé avec des écouteurs. Mais ça, ça vaudrait... Comment ça s'appelle Elle s'appelle Manuela, Manuela Filippa. Elle est à Genève actuellement. C'est une femme avec qui on travaille régulièrement et qui est musicothérapeute et qui a, fait, qui a une expérience énorme sur le nouveau-né prématuré et son accompagnement pour qu'il ait un bon développement. Mmh. Mais je peux essayer de la contacter si ça vous intéresse comme témoignage. Elle parle français Elle parle français. Ok. Et et Philippa, les... c'est avec PH ou avec un F euh, Avec un F. Philippa. Ah. F-I-L-I-P-A. Il y a peut-être deux P, mais. D'accord. Et ça vaudrait peut-être le coup si vous voulez. Euh... Vous la connaissez ben, je je l'ai rencontrée deux, trois fois et je euh, n'arrive pas à l'attraper, <rire> mais, mais euh, je ne désespère pas, la Suisse n'est pas très loin de Strasbourg. <rire> ah, d'accord. Depuis le Covid, c'est compliqué de s'attraper, mais elle a encore sorti une étude l'année dernière sur, euh, euh, justement, elle, elle, avec la voix modulée de la maman, c'est ce que j'expliquais, entre la voix modulée et la voix neutre, euh, elle a mesuré les niveaux d'ocytocine dans la salive des bébés 
qui, en fait, avec la voie modulée, elle arrive à déclencher des sécrétions d'ocytocine, et ça, c'est vraiment excellent, parce que ça accentue le, la, la mise en place des liens mère-enfant, de, de l'attachement, et c'est extrêmement bénéfique également, parce que c'est un antalgique naturel. Donc, euh, c est, c est, voilà, donc on, on travaille beaucoup là-dessus en ce moment, c'est un peu notre spécialité à Strasbourg, l'ocytocine, on est, on est très engagé. <rire> et donc, pour l'autisme, évidemment, ça, ça, ça fait du sens, puisqu'en fait, euh, l'ocytocine semble améliorer quand même un petit peu euh, le comportement autistique, et, même si c'est malheureusement, l'essai clinique n'a pas été… Euh... En tout cas, ce qui est intéressant aussi dans l'autisme, c'est ce, 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 flagrant, c'est-à-dire que les enfants, si on les interpelle en chantant, en ayant de voix modulée, c'est complètement différent que si on leur parle. On a tout de suite plus ouais. attention. Bon, ça demande beaucoup d'énergie. Hein. Enfin, moi, je trouve que ça demande beaucoup d'énergie dans, dans les séances. Mais c'est une évidence. Quoi. Si on module, si on joue sur les émotions ou si on chante, on attire tout de suite plus attention que si on a la voix classique, qu'on parle. Mmh. Ça n'a strictement rien à voir au niveau de la relation et de la communication avec, euh, avec l'enfant ou l'adolescent ou l'adulte, hein, qu'importe, mais c'est vraiment flagrant. Moi, j'ai des enfants qui ont commencé vraiment à… à qui ne parlaient pas, mais qui commençaient à chanter, en fait. Ça n'avait pas de sens, mais ils ont, ils ont chanté. Voilà, c'était le chant qui a pris devant pour, en, pour ensuite arriver un peu à avoir une communication verbale euh, plus classique, on va dire. Ouais. Donc, je pense qu'effectivement, euh, moi, je ne suis pas très scientifique, mais en tout cas, la voix modulée, euh, moi, je vois bien que ça n'a rien à voir entre la voix oui, parlée et la voix modulée, n'a pas du tout le même impact, euh, même, même au niveau de c'est pour, pour ça que je, moi, ça m'intéresse beaucoup cet aspect-là, parce que je, je viens du, du pot à pot, parce que pareil, le pot à pot, ouais. le, le toucher contact, enfin, le massage léger, tout ça, c'est aussi des, 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 des stimulations qui permettent de sécréter de l'ocytocine. Donc, donc évidemment, ça m'intéresse tous ces aspects-là. Et ouais. j'ai l'impression, c'est pour ça que je lui posais la question, c'est que ce qui marche, ça ne ça, ça passe pas par l'audition purement. Enfin, il y a peut-être une composante ouais. auditive. Ça reste une simulation mécanique aussi au niveau auditif. Mais c est, c est, il pourrait y avoir à ce moment-là des mécanismes qui sont beaucoup plus euh, de la perception de vibrations par la peau. Ouais. Et comme on sait qu'il y a ces fibres maintenant à très des, comment, à, faible, à bas seuil, là, des fibres ouais. C à bas seuil là, qui ont été découvertes et un peu mises en valeur parce qu'il y a eu le prix Nobel avec l'expression de ces canaux piezo, là, donc par le Ardenne Patapoutian, ben peut-être qu'effectivement, ça passerait à, tra à travers quelque chose de non, visuel, de, de non auditif. Oui, et, ouais. et, et moi qui travaille sur le cerveau depuis des années, je me dis c'est intéressant parce qu'on a exactement la même chose pour la vision. On a des, 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 des pigments qui changent en fonction du non visuel et qui régulent la dépression ou les émotions. Oui. Donc, on a des doubles systèmes la vision qui fait la vue classique et des systèmes non visuels qui régulent les émotions, l'humeur. Et là, on pourrait avoir la peau qui ferait office de, de relais sur des aspects bien-être. D'accord. Okay. Je trouve ça vachement intéressant. Et, et par rapport au toucher et à l'hypnose, je pense qu'il y a aussi des, des liens qu'on peut faire, probablement. Très bien. Bon. Oh, super. Eh bien, écoute, hein, je crois que c'était une bonne, une bonne réunion. Merci ouais, beaucoup de l'avoir organisé. Ouais, bravo, merci. Merci, merci à vous d'avoir participé. Je vais envoyer, j'enverrai le Zoom à tout le monde et okay. à Alice aussi qui ne pouvait pas être avec nous ce soir. Oui, c'est parce qu'on voilà, est hein. Je te laisse le soin, Marina, de, de voir tout ça pour les, les prochaines sessions. Bah, écoute, oui, voilà. Je okay. enverrai, ça marche. On verra. Merci beaucoup. Bonne soirée à tous. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir.